Hello, in this tutorial we are going to learn how to use the web serial library which is a library that offers to us an interface like the one we are seeing that allows to establish a communication with the SP32 in an interface that is very similar to what we experienced when we used for example the Arduino with the serial monitor um, to establish serial wired serial communication with the SP32. Uh, as target board for this tutorial I'm going to be using a Fire Beetle board from the FRobot. I'm also testing this on Arduino. Uh, EDA, as we can see here, with the version 2.0.0 of the Arduino core. Uh, so, going a bit back to the reason why this uh, uh, library is useful, uh, basically, if you are an Arduino user, most likely you have already used the serial interface to establish communication for some um, kind of application, or also very common to debug. And we are kind of um, tackling that use case here, where we just want to produce some message from the SP32 and see it somewhere else, uh, in this case in this interface, uh, to understand what is going on with our program. Um, obviously, the, the most basic way is using a wired um, serial uh, connection, uh, where we output the content for the wart of the SP32, and then we have some sort of um, uh, USB to serial converter, and then we connect uh, a USB cable to our computer, and we can see the, the messages in any serial tool. Typically, if you are an Arduino user, uh, we use the, the um, Arduino serial monitor. Uh, nonetheless, it may be useful in other use cases that we want to have our SP32 already deployed. Let's assume that we are developing an application where we have a sensor connected to the SP32, and then it is sending data to a computer or to some remote server. And at some stage, we may want to test um, the application uh, without having the SP32 connecting to a computer. We may want to deploy it in the field, but still have some sort of way uh, of seeing the messages that it is producing. Uh, this is just an example use case. Again, there are plenty. I'm, I'm focusing on debugging, but uh, you can even use this to, to other applications. Uh, so this is one of the reasons why this uh, is an interesting uh, solution. In terms of what is under the hood uh, from this library, it is based on the Sync HTTP uh, server library, one that we have already covered quite a lot in, in the blog, in Tech Tutorials X, and here also in the, the YouTube channel. And you need to have this installed as a dependency, uh, and only after uh, you can use the web serial. Uh, it's based on WebSockets, so what you are seeing here, and we'll see in more detail when testing, but basically there's a WebSocket connected from this client, the browser, um, to the ASP32, which is acting as an HTTP server that has um, a web socket endpoint. Nonetheless, all of these details are, uh, as we are going to see uh, in the code in a minute, they are handled for us, uh, so they are pretty much hidden in the implementation details, so the code just with this operating is very minimalistic. Um, just giving some information, so this is the wiki page of the project, uh, as you can see here, so um, in the features, it is mentioned here that it works on web sockets, like I was mentioning. It uses the sync web servers, also like I mentioned, so you need to have this dependency. And here you can see all the dependencies, depending on if you are on the SP8266 or the SP32. We are going to develop for the SP32. You have also here the information on how to install this particular library, so you can do it from the library manager of the Arduino EDA if you are on platform I.O. I also have it open here, so I was also testing that it works on platform I.O. You can also install in here uh, through the libraries manager. Uh, so now I'm going to jump right to the code. So I have here the Arduino uh, EDA open. Um, and I'm assuming that you already have installed at this stage. So starting with the beginning, um, we have our include section. Obviously, this will operate over Wi-Fi. So uh, we have the Wi-Fi dot edge um, include here. So it allows us to connect the SP32 to Wi-Fi network, like we have been doing countless times in our tutorials. We have here also the include for the ASP async web server, uh, which, like I said, is used under the hood by this library. And then the web serial dot edge, which will offer all the functionality related uh, with setting up this interface. Uh, as usual, if we are going to connect, and in this case I'm connecting to a Wi-Fi network, we could also do this through a soft AP, but I'm going to, to connect to my own network. So we need to define here the credentials for the name of the network and the password. I have here placeholders. Don't forget to replace these by the actual credentials of the network you want to use. Um, here, uh, 
we need also to create an object of this class, a Sync Web Server. Once again, if you have already seen some of my tutorials about the Sync HTTP Web Server, this is the class that allows us to set up uh, the web server. Uh, in, in this particular case, we need to create this object and then we will pass it uh, to, to a class that will uh, take care of all the web serial um, stuff. But we are not going to cover this here, it's more advanced. But the fact that we have control over the server, so we instantiate the server ourselves, allow us to do interesting things like, okay, I may want to develop my own um, server, like some web-based application, uh, so I still have access to this object, so I can configure routes, uh, but I may want to add, maybe for a certain period, just the capability of having the web serial um, interface, uh, so I can still do the development over the same server and add this functionality to, to that server um, and keep uh, fine-tuning or keep uh, configuring the rest of the server however we want. Again, we are not going to cover here, but if you are a more advanced user, keep in mind that uh, you can still do whatever you want to do with your server as long as the routes you define don't, don't clash uh, with the WebSocket route that is used by the library. Okay, so to create uh, an object of this class, we need to pass as input uh, the port where the server will be listening. We are going to use port 80, which is the default HTTP port. Um, and then we are going to move to the setup. So in the setup, I'm here opening a serial connection. Uh, I know this might be a bit counterintuitive, but the reason is simple. Uh, in order to reach the server, uh, we need to know what is the IP address that is assigned to the SP32 uh, on our network. So uh, and before I can even reach the web, uh, uh, the web serial interface, I need to go to my wired interface to get this IP address. Of course, that this is a very introductory tutorial. There's a way to circumvent this. We can, for example, use MDNS um, in order to avoid having to know the IP address beforehand. I may leave here. I will leave here a, a link in the description to a, a blog post I've done a couple of time ago about MDNS. We are not going to cover uh, right now, but if, again, if you have interest in exploring these, um, note that you don't necessarily need to print the IP address beforehand. There are other ways to handle this uh, this way of being able to reach the SP32. Then we we go to this Wi-Fi. Um, external uh, object that gets available when we import the Wi-Fi.edge library, pretty standard what we do whenever we need to, to use um, Wi-Fi. So we call the begin method, pass as input the credentials, and then here we are pulling here the connection until we know that the Wi-Fi, uh, that we were able to, to connect to the Wi-Fi network as usual. In a real application scenario, we should handle possible errors. Uh, if you mess with the credentials, if they are wrong, or if there is any situation, this will try to, this will stay here forever. So again, uh, we are all, always here writing our code in a very simplified way. Uh, in a real application scenario, make sure to handle all the possible error situations. Uh, then we are printing here the IP address assigned to the SP32 once it is connected to the Wi-Fi network. So then we can uh, check it on the wired serial um, connection, so on the Arduino EDS serial monitor to later reach uh, the web serial interface. Uh, just another note, so typically the local IP address of your ASP32 doesn't change frequently uh, in your own network, so if you don't want to go through the trouble of using MDNS like I mentioned before, but you want to do a remote debugging, like you want to deploy this somewhere in your house and not have it, the SP32 connected to the to the computer, but still be able to access the the, um, the serial monitor. Most likely, if you do this once to get a local IP address to uh, that is assigned to the SP32, it will most likely maintain it for a, a good period of time. So you can uh, use that. Uh, that address, uh, that IP address from that point onward, so it should not change uh, frequently. Uh, then it's trivial, really trivial to, to have everything set up for the web serial. So we have also here this uh, external object, so called web serial. Again, it becomes available from our uh, includes, and we need to call here this begin method. Take in consideration the naming uh, the author of the library was careful, I believe, uh, because like when you uh, when you start the serial connection, uh, you also call a, a method call begin. Notice here uh, the name, the similarity. So it makes us feel like uh, things are very, very uh, similar when we are using a wired connection or when we are using 
um, this um, this solution. So as input, we pass the address of our server object, uh, the one that we have just created here. Um, and from this point onward, the library will take care of configuring everything that is necessary under the hood, all the routes, the WebSocket routes, and also the route to serve the HTML and, and the front-end files necessary to render the application. All of that is configured under the hood by us uh, once we call this method and pass here the address of our server object. After that, like I said, we retain control over the server object in the sense that we can configure uh, other endpoints, but also we also need to be the ones calling the begin methods. Again, if you have used uh, the sync web server, you know that this is calling this method is what makes the server starts working, starts listening to incoming requests. So we need to be the ones uh, calling these, which makes sense because uh, we don't know if this call to the web serial begin will do the, if we want to add the extra routes to the server, if we are going to call this after or before we add the routes. Uh, so calling the begin internally could, could not be a good idea because we could be initializing the server ahead of time. So the fact that we still retain control and that we are the ones calling this begin method uh, for more advanced use cases is very useful. Uh, since we are using the, the under the hood the server the sync web server um, library, we don't need to periodically pull, periodically pull any object to to check if there is an incoming client or not. All of them is handled asynchronously. But uh, what we want now is to um, just showcase like a, a simple application where we are printing something to this uh, to this serial web serial interface. So I'm doing here. Uh, in the main loop, a delay of one second, and then I'm printing here a hello world message periodically. Again, look here into the, um, the name of the function, print uh, len, which is what we also typically call when we want to print something to the, serial, to the, to the wired serial interface. And that's it, the code is very simple. We are just covering here how to print data uh, to, the, to the serial monitor, not receiving, okay, it's also a feature of this of this, uh, uh, this uh, um, library, but we are not covering that uh, on this tutorial. So uh, I've already loaded this, uh, so you don't have to wait for the upload. So I've already loaded this into my SP32. As you can see here, as expected, it is printing the IP address of the of my device, so that the one that was assigned to my device once it connected to the uh, to the Wi-Fi network. Now let me just jump. I already have here one of the applications open. So as you can see here, it is periodically printing the hello world message. I can just do reset here so you can see it um, again. So starting, obviously, it, it won't preserve. If I, if I just reset uh, or refresh, it won't preserve the previous messages. And as you can see, here, it is uh, printing with more or less a, a periodicity of one second, like we expect. As I mentioned, we can also send here information to the SP32, but we are not covering that here because we need to handle that in the SP32 side. Um, so as you can see, the interface is, is quite clean, so uh, it's good looking. We can here scale here and make this, uh, we can make this bigger. Uh, so we can also scroll uh, to see the, the, the older messages. Actually, there is no, no timing stamp here, which could be something interesting uh, if the browser could timestamp it. It's just an idea, but it's something that we don't have, but it could be a nice addition to the library. Uh, if we open here, I'm on Chrome. Uh, so if we, we open here the developer tools and if we go to the network tag, uh, tab, sorry, uh, you can see here obviously that when we access uh, the, this endpoint. Oh, I just I forgot to mention, sorry, uh, the URL is, is the IP address and you need also to, to reach this uh, endpoint here called web serial, okay? If you just reach this without putting web serial, you are not going to be able to get the UI. So, sorry, I forgot to mention that. Um, so, basically, you can see here uh, the files that it serves. Uh, the important one that we are going just to take a brief look is this WebSocket here. So you can see that there's a WebSocket connection uh, established and you can see here the data going uh, and being exchanged. Basically, it is being pushed by the server, which is the SP32 to our browser. And you can see here the message being exchanged is roughly one second between them. It's not super exact. Uh, we are using delays. We are not using any other method and we have the network delays, etc. But it's roughly one second like like we have uh, uh, mentioned before. Uh, just another note, um, and it is also mentioned here by the author of the library. Let me just scroll. 
so uh, you can open any number of serial monitors so I have here one more for example and as you can see both of them are working um, and that's it it's a very interesting solution that you can um, use so uh, not only for debugging you can find here other applications like sending commands to the SP32 something along those lines it's quick to set up we don't need to be developing the front-end code uh, it's already available to be installed um, and that's it hope you have enjoyed uh, this tutorial thank you very much for watching